we're going to solve these very like lightning quick. We'll solve them lightning quick. But I want to talk mostly about the graph. Of course, you're going to divide by two. Nothing's going to change if x is less than or equal to zero. True. Leave our and. You subtract two. You three x is greater than six. You divide by three. You get x is greater than two. Those should be no-brainers. We solve those like basic algebra, um, pre-algebra even. We get that those inequalities. Of course, we'll put 0 on our number line and 2 on our number line. But I want you to notice what happens. Watch on the board here with me. First, are you OK solving those down? Yes. OK. Watch on the board here. We're going to have x less than 0. That's less than, that's left than, that's to the left. Since x is on the correct side for us to graph this way, we go this way. Let's look at the 2. Does the 2 go to the left or to the right? And means crossover. And means an intersection. And means where these two inequalities have the same numbers. Do we have a crossover, a connection, an intersection, or where these have the same numbers? No. They're not both here, they're not both here, they're not both here. This has no intersection whatsoever. So I've given you kind of three examples now. I've given you one where we have a definite crossover, where it stops. I've given you one where I have a crossover but goes on forever. I've given you one that doesn't have a crossover at all. We put that. It's, there's, it, we don't say no solution. We say the empty set. We say there's no numbers that have both of these things in common. It's impossible to think of a number that fits both here and here. That's what we're saying in this case. You with me on this still? Okay. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about today, we're not going to get to our ors. We'll get to that on Wednesday. Last thing we're going to talk about is, you remember how I could put these things together? Uh, I put these ones together over here. I can say we can make that compound inequality as one statement. What's nice is that a lot of times the book will do that for you. And on my test, I'll, I'll probably do that for you. So and inequalities can often be written as these com compound statements, like this, which are actually even a little bit easier to work with. Kind of nice. Actually, kind of, kind of really nice. The only thing is, you don't just have two sides anymore like a regular equation. In fact, you have kind of three sides. What you do to the middle, you also have to do to both other sides. Does that make sense to you? You solve the equation the same way. So, if I'm trying to get x in the middle here, I want to keep that in the middle. What I need to get rid of? How do I get rid of that one? So are you are you understanding that? So if I'm going to subtract the one here, it's not just I subtract it here. I also have to subtract it here. All three of those little segments, every section. Can you tell me what's on the left-hand side, please? Does this inequality change? No, because I'm subtracting. I'm not dividing by negative. What's in the middle? How much is in the middle? Negative x. Negative x. We didn't get rid of that yet. Then I have 8 on the right hand side. Are you okay with that so far? All I do is subtract the 1. Now, is this what I'm looking for? Do I want negative x? No. I'll get rid of that negative. Uh -huh. So if I divide by negative 1, I do it here and here and here. I do get negative 4, I do get x, and I do get negative 8. But since I divided by negative, can you tell me what's happening to these signs? So they're not going to be facing this way anymore. They'll be facing this way. You okay with that so far? Now, there's one thing. This is written backwards. This is written weird. So instead of, we don't want negative 4 is greater than x is greater than negative 8. That's written the wrong way. We need this to be written in order of a number line. I want you to notice how right now the bigger numbers on the left-hand side, do you see that? What we're going to do with this, if you ever get that, which often happens if you're dividing by negative, you're going to take that inequality, like take it off, take it off the board, you're going to flip it around and put it back on the board. So you're taking it, flipping it around, and putting it back. So instead of negative 4 is greater than x is greater than negative 8, I'm going to make negative 8 is less than x is less than negative 4. Does it say the same thing? then that's appropriate to write. We want it this way because check it out. If you were to draw your interval notation right now, you're just looking for the numbers between negative 8 
and negative 4. Notice how these numbers fall right down on your number line. If you want to go directly to interval notation, this is even better. Check this out. This is very easy to see. Where's your interval start? Someone else, where's your interval end? Four. Am I going to use brackets or parentheses? Brackets. 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 That's it. Remember, this does not stand for a point in this context. This is an interval. I'm going to show what we talked about today. Good, good. If you make that far, that's really good. We're going to practice this a couple times tomorrow, then we'll get on into our or problem, uh, inequalities. So, if you remember from last time, what we were talking about was these compound inequalities where we're mashing two inequalities together with the words and or the word or. Now, if you looked at your homework, you probably weren't able to do about half of it because we haven't even talked about the word or yet. That's our goal for today. Uh, we've pretty much finished up the word and. Uh, I'll review a couple concepts right now with you. Then we'll go on to the word or and see how that differs from the word and. So when we talked about the word and from last time, what we said was that and means the elements that are common to two sets at the same time. So what's in one group and at the same time in another group. Do you remember that from last time? Mm -hmm. It was the intersection. And since we had the intersection, the intersection, we used that upside down letter U. It looked like a letter N without the little tail. And that said we were in the intersection. It was the and. The N was the and. The end. You get me? So it means common to both. And we found out that if we have inequalities, we can look to see where those things overlap. We graphed a lot of uh, a lot of inequalities on a number line where they crossed over, where they intersected. That was our and. That was the intersection, and we were able to use interval notation with either brackets or parentheses to cover that. How many people remember that from last time? Good deal. We also learned that oftentimes and inequalities and compound inequalities can be represented like that. And it actually makes it a little bit easier to solve for us because we only have to look at our middle section here and solve that for x. And if we can do that, as long as we do it to both sides, we'll have ourselves a compound inequality at the very end. Let's see if we can do this together. Uh, what will be the first step in solving this inequality, please? Great, because we're trying to get x by itself. The only thing is that if you subtract 5 from the middle, you also have to subtract it from these two sides. There's now like three sections to this. On the left-hand side, how much do we get? Oh, hey, does our inequality flip around? When does our inequality flip around? Good. So this is still less than. What's in the middle? Perfect. Less than or equal to how much? Notice that on this inequality also I have a less than and I have a less than or equal to. I have two different inequalities. Don't lose track of those. Make sure that you have those inequalities on your paper. That you don't change one to the other accidentally. Okay, we're not quite done. What's the next thing we need to do? So we're dividing by, oh yeah, negative 2. So of course we found out that negative 2 over negative 2, that's going to give you positive 1. In the middle here, we'll get the x like we suspected. On the right-hand side, we'll get negative 2. But then, and since we divided by a negative, those inequalities have to flip around. So whereas this was a less than, now it becomes greater than. This was less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. So we flip those around every time we not just divide, but divide by a negative. That's the key point there. You guys with me still? Now, am I done with that problem like it is? There, there's one little issue with this, and the issue is, according to a number line, this is written backwards. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? The small numbers on the, on the right-hand side, the big numbers on the left-hand side, that's not appropriate. So what we did, what I said last time, is we're going to take this off the page, or the whiteboard in this case, take this off the whiteboard, flip it around, and put it back. So we're just reversing everything. Everything's getting flipped around. So what should I start with if I'm going to reverse everything? Okay, now, here's an important thing. Tell me what symbol I need to put next. Good, so this symbol is following this negative 2. We're flipping that part around too. Do you see that? So this is going over here. In the middle, we have our x. That's not going to change. Then we're going to have, remember, we're flipping this less than 1. We just write everything backwards. So it's like you're reading from the right to the left. Negative 2, less than or equal to x, less than 1. That's what we have here. So far, so good? 
Can you put this in interval notation? That's with the parentheses or with the brackets. Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah, in fact, since we wrote it this way, this is really nice for us. This pretty much is a picture of a number line. That's all it is. It just says where you start, it says where you end, and it says whether or not you can include these numbers at the end. So where does this interval start? Negative 2. Okay. Bracket. Why a bracket? Because it has a bracket. And we have going up to 1. That one's going to be a perfect. These say the same thing. Actually, all three of these say the same thing. These two are just written appropriately. Those two are, are the ones we want. This is the most concise way we can write that. This says you can go from 2 inclusive to 1 non-inclusive. And all of those points in there, negative, I'm sorry, negative 2. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, and up to 1, like 0.999 will work in this compound inequality. Do you guys feel good about the and inequalities here? How many people feel <coughs> just fine? Ready to move on to or, All right? Now let's see how or differs. Oh yeah, there's one more. I do want to show you this one. Uh, just to make sure you can do this. Like that one. Can we do it if there's a fraction in the middle? Let's do this real quick. What's our first step going to be on this problem, folks? Two. Oh, before the two. One. Yeah, let's get rid of that one. You could multiply by two everywhere as long as you included this one, this one, this one, and that one. All four spots. You could do that. Uh, I'm going to choose to subtract one in this case and get negative four less than or equal to x over two less than four. That way I only have to multiply three things by the two. That's the only reason in this case. I just wanted you to notice that x over two is solvable. You, you don't have to stop here. Uh, we have x divided by 2, the way we get rid of division, we simply multiply by the number that is our denominator. If we do that in all three spots, that's here, here, and here. I'm going to put parentheses around there to signify that's a negative number. What are we going to get in the middle? Well, those, x, those two simplify to 1, we get an x. Do we have to change any of these signs? No. That's an 8. That's a negative 8. Hey, do I need to flip this thing around on the paper like we did before? This is already in the correct order. This is great. Negative 8 to 8, that looks like a number line already. We'll simply write this in interval notation. We go from negative 8 to 8. This is why this compound inequality form is very nice. It really just gives it straight to you if you write those numbers out. That's, that's great. Parentheses, bracket again, and we're, we're done. Okay, now we can look how or differs from our, our and. So now we're talking about the word or. In English, when you say the word or, typically we mean either or, right? We say, I would rather, I would like apple pie or cherry pie. Do you get both apple pie and cherry pie? Typically not, not in English, but here's how it works in math. I, I, yeah, of course, I get apple and cherry, duh. Well, in math, here's how it works. It says, you can have either apple pie, or sorry, you can have apple pie or cherry pie. What that means is you get apple pie or you get cherry pie or you get both apple pie and cherry pie. So or in mathematics means you get one or the other, or 